How to get ripped? The secret to getting ripped can be found in the life of a professional athlete. Why do athletes look the way they do? Now, any modern day athlete has three crucial elements in his life. The first is the element of weight training. I've already spoken about that in one of my past videos. But the other two elements are also as crucial as the weight training aspect. The first is the high amount of cardio involved in almost any sport. And the third element are the high calorie diets. Every single athlete has a very high calorie diet. Andy Murray has about 5,500 calories a day. Usain Bolt has about 6,000. And Michael Phelps is famous for having his 10,000 calorie plus diet a day. Now on Beer Biceps, I keep promoting the idea that if you want to eat what you want, if you want to keep your calories slightly high for every single day, you've got to work off those calories. And science has finally come out with the theory that backs what I say. Scientifically speaking, the secret to getting ripped lies in something called the G-Flux. In one of my recent videos, I spoke about the bulking and cutting myth. Modern day science tells us that the fastest way to put on muscle mass is by maintaining a low fat percent throughout the year. When your fat percent is lower, it's the best kind of environment for your body to build muscle. But what you need to understand is that there's a second method by which you can create the best possible environment to build muscle mass. We're talking about the energy flux or the G flux here. Now what you need to understand is that the bodybuilding world keeps evolving. We keep learning new aspects of fitness science. And the G flux is a very new concept. So in order to explain being in a state of G flux, I'm gonna give you all an example. Suppose there are two guys with the exact same genetics and exact same training plan. They both have the same capabilities of putting on muscle. Now, in order to put on muscle, they're both trying to be in a lean mass phase. They're not going on a bulk, but they're staying at around the same maintenance calorie level and just increasing it a little bit. Both want to be in a 200 calorie surplus. Now, one of them decides that, okay, I want to be in a 200 calorie surplus. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to eat about 2000 calories and I'm going to work off 1800 calories every single day. So he goes to the gym, does a bit of cardio and works off those 1800 calories. But those 200 calories in that surplus helps him put on the muscle. Now, the second guy also wants to be in a 200 calorie surplus, but he approaches the system differently. So he'll consume 3000 calories, a very high amount of food, but he'll also back it up by outputting 2800 calories. So overall, both the guys are in a 200 calorie excess, but the second guy is said to be in a state of G-flux. Now, if you ask a dietitian who's been educated by the traditional methods, traditional fitness science, they'll tell you that both the guys will have the same result because they're both in a 200 calorie surplus. But that's where modern day science becomes beautiful. Modern day science tells us that the guy who's in a state of G-flux his body is in a better environment to put on muscle mass. The amount of muscle mass he'll put on will be more than the first guy. Recent studies, and I will be linking them down below, say that being in a state of G-flux is very beneficial to how you look and how much muscle mass you put on. That's why athletes look the way they look. Through the week, they have all their training sessions, they're doing a lot of cardio, and they're also backing it up with a very high calorie diet. So they're eating a lot of food and they're also burning off their food. You combine that with weight training and it sets up the best possible anabolic environment for your body. Studies show that being in a state of G-flux has a lot of benefits. The top benefit is an increased metabolism. All of y'all keep asking me these questions about how to increase your metabolism. This is the answer. You have a high caloric input and you have a high caloric output. The second huge benefit is that your body's ability to put on muscle mass increases greatly. Along with an increased ability to put on muscle, your body's ability to use fat for energy also increases. Because you're in that elevated state of activity through the week, your body ends up using all its fat stores for energy. You combine this process with weight training and your body's also saving all its muscle mass. The fourth benefit is a better recovery. You want to get better at any sport, you want to get better at any activity, you need to put your body through that activity. Because you're putting your body through such intense work through the week, but you're also backing it up with food and you have an increased metabolism, your body's ability to recover improves vastly. And the fifth and final benefit is the most important, an improved nutrient repartitioning. Nutrient repartitioning basically means how well your body uses the food that you eat. Instead of using all those calories you're eating to put on fat, 
Your body uses those calories to help your body recover and put on muscle mass. When you're putting your body through stress, it makes best use of that food. When we talk about this best possible environment for your body to put on lean mass, it boils down to your nutrient repartitioning. You want to optimize the way your body is using all the food you're putting in. But enough with the science, let's talk about the practical way of doing things. What should you change in your training plan to be in a state of G-flux? What you've got to understand is that if you're not smart about it, if you're not careful, trying to be in a state of G-flux might work against you. A lot of people get caught up in spending that many calories that they don't back it up with enough food. So instead of putting on muscle, you'll end up losing muscle mass because your caloric output is more than your caloric input. Precaution number one is that you eat a lot of food. Precaution number two is how do you fill all these calories? Now just because you have that increased calorie cap doesn't mean you go around having junk food and a lot of fat. Ideally, try filling it with a little more protein and a lot more carbohydrate. That is what athletes do. Most athletes will have a good serving of complex carbs with every single meal, including dinner. The third precaution is very, very important. Being in a state of G-flux is a very intense situation for your body and you have to balance it out with rest days. Now, if you want to be in a state of G-flux, I would suggest that you take at least two entirely restful days in the week. Make sure that there are two days where you don't do any kind of activity. We are not going for cardio, we are not weight training, you're just sitting at home and maybe just go for a 15 to 20 minute walk to elevate your metabolism a little bit, but nothing more than that. The fourth precaution is that how do you actually go into a state of G-flux? Now you have to find your own system, but this is what I would recommend. So you're doing a normal weight training from one to one and a half hours a day. And you can also add about 15 to 20 minutes of intense cardio on the same days you do your weight training. Make sure you don't do it before your weight training sessions because that's not optimum. You either do it immediately after you're done with weight training or do it about 3-4 hours away from your weight training. So 3-4 hours before or 3-4 hours after your weight training is a great time to add that little extra bit of cardio. And the final precaution is the most important. We're talking about numbers. Now on beer biceps, I don't promote the idea of measuring all your food and counting your exact macros. We all live in the real world and it's just not worth it. But what I do promote is understanding your own body. And in order to understand your own body, you've got to experiment a little bit. Your best friend through this process is going to be your weighing scale. You have to keep a track of how your weight is responding to your new G-Flux lifestyle. So once you begin your new training regime, you have to keep a track of your weight. Make sure you aren't losing weight. That means you're having too little food and you also shouldn't be putting on weight too fast. The whole point of being in a state of G-Flux is to try to put on muscle mass and burn off fat at the same time. So a great way to keep track of your weight is putting on about 0.1 kgs every week or every 10 days. That's a good estimate. What you need to understand is that while you're putting on muscle in this process, you're also burning off fat. So even if your weight stays the same, it's okay. Look at yourself in the mirror and look at how your body's feeling. If you're feeling great, if you feel like it's not too intense for you, keep going with that process but never overdo it while trying to be in a state of G-flux. Even if you want to be in a state of G-flux, don't increase your caloric input and output by 1000 calories. Gradually work your way up to that level of G-flux. So in the first week, start with increasing your calories by 200 in terms of what you eat and also work off those 200 calories. As the weeks progress, find a system that works for you. But what I would suggest as your online coach is that don't create more than a 500 or 600 calorie increase in your overall input and output. More than that would be too much. At the end of the day, this is a long term process and you want to keep some fuel left in the tank to do this in the long term. The key with G-Flux is to not go too hard on yourself. It's a long term process. Hey guys, so that was the video for today. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Now keep in mind, I've already made a video on how to go about training as an athlete. Whether you play cricket or football, the protocols are very similar. So make sure you check that out if you're an athlete. And if you're just someone who's trying to put on muscle mass, make sure you check out my Science of Muscle playlist. So until next time guys, from Ranveer, see you.